We're back here outside the State Education Building in downtown Albany, where I'm joined by Marie Cusick of the Innovation Trail. And Marie, you had to do a little bit of traveling for this week's story. We did, Matt. We hit the road. A group of researchers from the Rochester Institute of Technology were joined by scientists from across the country this month at a forest in central Massachusetts to try to answer some of the biggest questions about how humans are impacting the natural world. Thousands of purple boxes like this one are hanging in trees all over New York State this summer. They're traps to lure a tiny beetle, causing major problems. This trap looks clean. I don't see anything that looks like emerald ash borer on it. Rob Cole is with the Department of Environmental Conservation, and he's on the hunt for emerald ash borer. They're an invasive species from Asia that first appeared in the Midwest a decade ago. They've already killed 50 million ash trees across the U.S. There's not much we can do about it other than try to slow it down. Uh, it is in the state and it will eventually uh, kill all the ash trees. Those trees add up to 7% of New York's forests. The fight against this insect is just one of many battles across the country in the constant war against invasive species. But scientists now have new tools to track and respond to threats like the ash borer. This team of researchers from the Rochester Institute of Technology is trekking into a forest in central Massachusetts to begin an unprecedented effort to monitor the health of environments across the country. What we were trying to do is look for change, and that could be land use change, invasive species, climate change, any sort of long-term change. It's part of a large-scale, federally funded project called the National Ecological Observatory Network, or NEON. The idea is to use high-tech equipment to collect information from the air and the ground at sites all over the country and watch what's happening to different environments over a long period of time. This forest, owned by Harvard University, is one of the first sites NEON is looking at. Longitude is west, 72. One of the goals of the project was to sort of do more big science. So the idea was rather than working at a single location and really studying the details of that location, let's start looking at the entire continent. Over the next few years, researchers are going to begin to fly planes just like this one all over the United States. And they're planning to collect data for the next 30 years. And it's not just any plane. It's equipped with a high resolution digital camera, a laser, and this thing built by NASA called an imaging spectrometer. It allows you to, di to differentiate between live and dead vegetation, soil and vegetation, and man-made structures, for example. All this data gets reassembled into a colorful new picture of the forest. We should be able to come up with a species map to describe which trees are out there. So whether it's an ash tree, a hemlock, an oak, and then we should also be able to tell when these trees are under stress. That stress could mean the trees are suffering from a drought or being attacked by an invasive insect like the ash borer. More from the global warming standpoint or even just climate change is what happens to all those trees. Now you have all these dead trees that are gonna decay and maybe release carbon into the atmosphere. So there's a lot of fear, not just that you're losing, you know, really pretty trees that help shade the forest, but there are other implications if those trees do die. The plane flies overhead in late summer when the leaves are at their peak. The laser scans the landscape and can tell how tall the trees are. The imaging spectrometer can spot changes in the health of the canopy. You can get sort of these chemistry measurements, but you're combining that with 3D measurements. And that was the type of thing that people always wanted to do, but it was very difficult or expensive to do five, 10 years ago. The team from RIT has brought their own laser to scan the forest from the ground. Right here. They'll compare their results with the data from the plane to check its accuracy. It's useful in the sense that if we wanted to know the locations of all the trees and their heights and the diameters, we could on one hand come out and actually measure them and this would take a very long time. <laughs> I mean just to measure the height of a single tree can be very difficult. In minutes they can see a 3D picture of the forest, a precise image of every tree trunk and leaf. Hopefully we can gain information about the entire forest in a day whereas that might take years or even decades to cover that by the ground.
The data they bring back to NEON will be made publicly available to anyone who wants to use it to look at things like climate change, land use, or the spread of invasive species. I'm excited to do this because we're, we're looking for change. And there's a lot of potential for change right now. And it'll be interesting to see how much of that we can measure and quantify and look at that over the 30 year period. And it's also fun to fly around in a plane. <laughs> The NEON project is expected to be fully up and running in the next five years at 60 different sites across the U.S.